Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Math with Sewn. Today we're going to be doing the midpoint of line segments and how that can be used to find out the lengths of different parts of that line segment. So, let's say you were given a line segment A, B, and on this line segment if you were told that there is a midpoint that would be we can call it point C. If point C is the midpoint, then we would know that that is the middle of A to B. Okay? And you would have to be told that information, you can't just assume it. So if you're told that is the midpoint, then you can use that information to your advantage because if it is the midpoint, then that would let you know that from A to C and from C to B, if it's the middle, well, then that would mean that these two parts right here would have to be equal to each other. And that's what those hash marks indicate, that those two line segments are equal to each other. So if you were told that this part from here to here was 5x minus 3 from A to C, and you were told from C to B was 11 minus 2x, you could use that information to your advantage. Because point C is the middle, that means that it is cut directly in half into two equal portions, then you can set both halves equal to each other. Which is what I did there. I set the 5x minus 3 equal to the 11x minus 2. And then we're going to solve that equation. I'm going to probably add the 2x. We get 7x minus 3 equals 11. And then I'm going to add 3. 7x would equal 14. When we divide by 2, we get x is equal to, not divide by 2, when we divide by 7, x equals 2. So that would be the value of x. A lot of times with these midpoint problems, they would like to know what is the length of a given portion of the line segment. So I want to know actually what is the length of AB in this case. So what would be the length all the way across? So we can plug in the 2 to figure that out. All right, so if I plug in 2 here, for this x, I would have 5 times 2 minus 3, which is 10 minus 3. 10 minus 3 happens to be 7. So that means from A to C, it was 7. If I were to plug in the same 2 for x in the other portion, the C to B, I should also get 7. So it's also a way of double checking your work. 11 minus 2 times 2 would be 11 minus 4, well 11 minus 4 is also 7. So it is the midpoint, these two parts are equal to each other. Uh, and not only that, if I wanted to find the length of A to B, well all I would have to do is either double this 7, double half of it, or add the 7 and 7 together, and when we add both of those 7's, you're going to get the length of AB is equal to 14. So for our next problem, we're going to have it relatively similar. We are going to be given a line segment. I'm going to keep it as an A and a B. And on this line segment AB, it is going to have a midpoint, which we can call point M. Why not M for midpoint? And in this case, I'm actually going to draw a line through the midpoint. And when you draw a line through the midpoint, Sometimes that is called the bisector. So you can use the word midpoint for that point in the middle, but the line that cuts it in half is called the bisector. All right. In this case, I'm going to tell you that AB, the whole length of A to B, is equal to 10x minus 12. And I'm going to tell you that A to M is equal to a 3x plus 2. So that means this short part right here is 3x plus 2. Which, if point M is the midpoint, then that would also tell us that this part right here is also 3x plus 2. And the whole way across from A to B is the 10x minus 12. So a all the way to B, that's where the 10x minus 12 is. That's the entire length. Now, if we're doing this like we did on the last problem, 
we would be setting these equal to each other, but you can't really set 3x minus 2 equal to a 3x minus 2. And a decent like rule of thumb for these problems is if you're given the entire length, then you're not going to be setting the two halves equal to each other most of the time. If you're given the total length of the line segment from A all the way to B, then you're going to have to add the two halves to equal that. Or you can recognize it as I could just double half of the distance to equal the whole thing if I'm halfway there. So you have two options. You can either add 3x plus 2 and another 3x plus 2 to equal the whole thing, 10x minus 12. Or, I like thinking of it as doubling it. If you were to just double half of the, the line segment, you would equal the entire thing. So that would be the doubling technique. So if you double something that's half of one another, then you end up with twice as much, and that would equal the whole thing in this case. So in this case, you would end up either combining like terms or distributing a 2. In both cases, it will work. You get 6x plus 4 equals 10x minus 12. And from here, I am going to subtract the 6x. We get 4 is equal to 4x minus 12. When we add 12, we end up with 16 is equal to 4x. Well, when we divide by 4, x will equal 4. All right, so what if I wanted to find something out about this? What if I wanted to find out what is the length of m to b? What, if, what would I have to do there? Well, I would just plug in the 4 into either of the two originals. Uh, I'm going to plug it into the a m part because a to m is equal to m to b. So I'm going to plug it into the 3x plus 2. So I'm going to do 3 times 4 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2, and is 14. So for our next problem, we're going to actually do one that's slightly easier, but because it's easier, you actually have multiple options on how to solve it. So what that would look like would be, is if you're given any line segment, and it's either bisected or has a midpoint, I'm going to bisect it again. So if this line AQ, I'm going to call it, if AQ bisects our original line, which I'm going to call BL, then that would mean that these two chunks here and here would have to be equal. Okay? So let's say that BL is equal to 42. So all the way across is equal to 42. And let's say that this middle point right here is, we'll call it M again. Let's say that ML is equal to a 5x plus 1, which means this chunk right here is 5x plus 1. Now, I said that this one was easier and harder because you don't necessarily have one way that you can do it. In this particular case, because you know the entire distance is 42, from B all the way to L, that whole thing is 42, and you've cut it in half, then you technically already know what each half is equal to. If you cut 42 in half, if you divide it in half, you end up with 21. So that means that from M to B is 21, and from M to L would also be 21. 21 plus 21 makes the 42. So because of that, you could recognize that fact and set the 5x plus 1 automatically equal to 21. Because that's what m to l is. 5x plus 1 and it equals 21. You would subtract 1, end up with 5x equals 20. When you divide 20 by 5, you end up with 4. Okay? So that's one way to do it. The other way that you can do it is the way that we've done the other problems, where you literally add them up to equal the total. So we could double the 5x plus 1, and that would equal the whole thing of 42. Now that's how we did it on the last problem. 
recognizing these are both 5x plus 1, so you could double it to equal the whole thing. And anyway, you end up with exactly the same answer. So I distributed the 2. If I subtract 2, I end up with 10x equals 40. And when I divide by 10, I get x equals 4 again. So it doesn't matter which way you approach it. In this case, I would recommend when you know the entire length of the line as a whole number, just cut it in half. Cut that whole number in half and you know what half of it is equal to automatically right off the bat. And the same for the beginning. I'm going to draw a line A to C. And I'm going to call point B the midpoint of that. So B is the midpoint of AC. Alright, so nothing new there. But I'm now going to add an extra point. I'm going to call this point R. And R is also a special point. R is the midpoint of A to B, or BA. Both are effective. So that means that R is perfectly in between A and B, and B is perfectly in between A and C. All right, so there's a lot of equal things here that you could do hash marks for if you wanted to. Um, what I want to know is if I know the whole thing AC, don't know exactly what it is, but I want to know how that compares to A to R. So essentially, what would I have to multiply AR by to equal the entire thing? All right. So some people will be able to get this right away, and if you don't, that's okay. What I recommend is plug in an easy number for the entire length of A to C, or just the length of A to R, to see what would happen. Okay? So let's say that you knew A to C was equal to something. So I'm going to pick an easy number. I'm also going to pick a bigger number because A to C is the largest part, and I don't want to end up dividing it and ending up with a decimal. So I'm going to pick a bigger number for A to C, and I think a pretty decent number to pick from A to C would be 20. 20 seems just about big enough. So if A all the way to C is 20, B to C would be half of that, which is 10. And A to B would also be 10, from A to B would be 10. Now, knowing that point R is also this midpoint of AB or BA, that means that we would have to divide this part into two equal sections. So we have to take this 10 and divide it equally in half. Well, half of 10 is 5, so that means from A to R is 5, and from R to B is 5. All right? So now what that tells us is we can now maybe interpret what would we have to do to the line segment AR? What would we have to multiply it by to get the full length of A to C? Well, A to C I said was, said was 20, and A to R, we can look at it and it's 5. Well, what do I have to multiply with 5 to equal 20? And the answer to that question is 4. I have to multiply it by 4 to equal 20. So that means that AC, whatever it is, is equal to 4 times AR. And that would be how it's represented abstractly. You could have also said a different version of that. You could say that you would have to multiply 2 times BC to equal the entire length of A to C as well. So if you took BC, which is half of the entire thing, you'd have to multiply it by 2 to get the entire length. A lot of times with geometry, they like to deal with formulas, and those formulas don't need to be thought of as confusing, but as a tool to help you out. So the actual midpoint formula is normally multiplying the half by 2 to equal the whole thing. All right? That's going to do it for today's episode, everybody. Till next time, stay positive, and I will see everybody later. Bye.